Hello class, and welcome to week eight. My name is Nick Haynes, I'm your instructor. Hi. And I'm here on the Vassar College campus. Uh, actually, uh, one of the poets we're reading this week, Edna St. Vincent Millay, is a graduate of Vassar, and, act and became well known as a poet while she was here. She may in fact have sat right beneath this enormous sycamore tree and composed a sonnet or two. So I'm here, uh, I'm going to take us inside the library and we're going to explicate uh, a couple of Millet's poems. Here's the library here. <clears throat> I'm sure some people will probably think I'm losing my mind, but lucky for us there aren't too many people around since it's spring break. So here we go. I'll probably be quiet for a moment as I walk through the lobby. Excuse me, I'm sorry. As you can see, it's pretty nice in here. Aren't too many people around, so that's good. And where can we find a place that won't bother anybody? Well, let's see. Okay, here we are. I will turn the light on. As you can see, there's tons of books around here. Quite an impressive library if you've never been. Um, and so what we're going to do today is we're going to look at a couple of Millet's lyric poems. Uh, they're both printed in your books, so you can follow along if you will. Uh, what I did is I printed them out and double spaced them so that we can really look at them closely and break down the lines one by one, which is called explication. So, here we go, I have them both here. And we'll start with the spring and the fall. So, this is what this one looks like. And you can, as you can see, it has three stanzas. And we'll look at each of these in turn. And we'll talk about some of the conventions of a lyric poem. Now, spring and the fall uh, has a lot of uh, interesting rhythmic aspects to it, which we'll talk about. I know probably reading about that, uh, the uh, <clears throat> reading about Scansion in the slideshow I posted probably doesn't do it much justice but hopefully this will help so here we have the spring and the fall by Edna St. Vincent Millay in the spring of the year in the spring of the year I walked the road beside my deer the trees were black where the bark was wet I see them yet in the spring of the year. He broke me a bough off the blossoming peach that was out of the way and hard to reach. In the fall of the year, in the fall of the year, I walked the road beside my deer. The rooks went up with a raucous trill. I hear, I hear them still in the fall of the year. He laughed at all I dared to praise and broke my heart in little ways. Year be springing or year be falling, the bark will drip and the birds be calling. There's much that's fine to see and hear in the spring of a year, in the fall of a year. Tis not love's going hurts my days, but that it went in little ways. So those are the three stanzas of the poem. Let's take a, a little bit, a little look here at the rhythm. So. Uh, what we want to look for here in this poem is you can see that the the lines have different number of syllables in each line um, 
the first one has 12 syllables, uh, the second one has 8. However, if we look at the emphasis, so if we say it out loud, in the spring of the year, in the spring of the year, so we don't emphasize of the or in the, but the spring and year, right? Uh, we have four emphasized notes, uh, four accented notes here. Um, if we look at the second line, I walked the road beside my deer. Again, we have four emphasized syllables. I walked be the road beside my deer. <clears throat> we have four emphasized syllables, just like in the first line. So that's one way we can think about this. And it, as we look down the poem, I, I invite you to do it to each of the lines. We'll see that each line has four emphasized notes. Well, why is that? Well, this poem deals with seasons. Perhaps it's because there's four seasons. Could be. All right, so we'll think about that. Now, <clears throat> okay, let's, so... Uh, there's some rhythmic backbones. We have four seasons, and then we also have three stanzas, right? So we have three stanzas. Okay, so those are some some of the formal properties here, but we'll bracket those for a moment and just take a look at the imagery in the poem. So, okay, so what happens here is there's a breakdown of a love affair, right? We see in the spring, there's some happiness here, right? He broke me a bough of the blossoming peach that was out of the way and hard to reach, right? The lover's going out of uh, his way, apparently, for um, for the speaker of the poem. Um, but there's an interesting uh, set of images here. He broke me a bough of the blossoming peach. See, now, a blossoming peach will do fine uh, on its own. It will continue to grow and blossom year after year unless the bough is broken. Okay, so so that's something to think about here. Uh, if we look up before, we get we get another... We get another kind of uh, <clears throat> inclination that perhaps all isn't perfect here. Uh, the trees were black where the bark was wet. Well, that has a sort of darkness to it as well. Uh, although the wet uh, wetness symbolizes fertility or fecundity, uh, we have the trees were black. The black trees, right? And of course, walking the road takes a sort of symbolic weight as well. Walking on a road isn't just walking on a road, it's, um, it's walking the road, you know, the road of life. So here we are, uh, I see them yet. He broke me a bow, we talked about that. Okay, then we have in the fall of the year, in the fall of the year. Okay, so seasons have changed. We're missing the summer, right? That's not there. Maybe that's our missing stanza. Um, I walked the road beside my deer, same action. The rooks went up with a raucous trill. Okay, well, what's a rook? Well, if you look it up, you'll find that a rook is a crow. Why, why call it a rook and not a crow? Well, we have rooks, raucous, trill. So we have these sounds that the, the writer's emphasizing. I hear them still, and there we go. So there's, there's her um, acknowledgement of the sensory uh, perception, right? I hear them still in the fall of the year. He laughed at all I dared to praise. Well, there we go. Now we see the lover's shortcomings, right? He, he laughed at all I dared to praise. What she loved, he laughed at. And broke my heart in little ways. Okay. In little ways. So not all at once. In little ways. It's not a storm approaching, but it's more like the changing of the seasons, right? And this is what this poem is having uh, going on here. So... Year be springing or year be falling, the bark will drip and the birds be calling. Okay, so now we have uh, a sense that the seasons don't really matter. It doesn't matter what season it is. Whether it's springing or falling, there's much that's fine to see and hear. Right? I see them yet. I hear them still. There's much that's fine to see and hear in the spring of a year, in the fall of a year. Tis not love's going hurts my days, but that it went in little ways. Okay, so what's she saying here? Well, 
It's not that love went. You know, if it went in a storm, that would hurt enough. But the fact that it trickled out little by little, just as the seasons passing from the spring to the summer to the fall, little by little, the changes occur gradually. The gradual change is what hurts. Not that it went at all, but that it hurt gradually. So we have these, these formal things, the fact that there's four seasons, but only three are represented here, the spring, the summer, and the fall. And in, th in three stanzas, right? Um, and as, and as, as the writer shows this progress, we see little by little, uh, the, the change in the emotion until finally we have just as the seasons change in little ways uh, the love went from springing to falling in little ways you know he laughed at all I dared to praise <clears throat> so it's, it's not, nothing sudden just a gradual melting of emotion lovely way to put this emotion into words so okay again we have if we look at this one more time, why, why do we have this, uh, this alternation of uh, syllables here? In the spring of the year, in the spring of the year. Well, that line almost springs because of those two uh, upbeats as opposed to the one downbeat. And then down here, where she's really trying to uh, give some of the dire... Uh, you know, she's foreshadowing some of those dire ideas of the end of the relationship. She, she changes the rhythm. The trees were black. Those two where you have an unstressed and then a stressed, unstressed and a stressed, which is called an I am. There's actually two I am's there. One unstressed, one stressed. Um, when you have something like that, you have... Uh, power, a lot of power in those words where the accent lies. Much different than in the spring of the year. The trees were black. It's darker, it's more dire, and it's more representative of this, this end of the relationship. So she's even setting up this, this ending, this unraveling, this unfolding right there in the beginning. And as we see, this whole poem revolves around the spring, the fall, seeing, and hearing, until finally we find how this relationship unraveled, unraveled very slowly. And it's not the season that matters at all, but the, season is an ex the seasons are expressions of the way the relationship unfolded, right? They simply take on this, this larger weight. It's not just spring and fall, but the relationship falling apart. So, uh, please uh, comment or ask any questions on the discussion panel. Hope you enjoyed this. And I'm going to sign off for now.